Hi Matrix and welcome to this finance video on Outstanding Balance brought to you by the Answer Series. In our previous finance videos on annuities, we have looked at taking out a loan where regular payments are made over a period of time. We now want to investigate what is owing on the loan at some point during the contract period. And this is referred to as Outstanding Balance. There are two methods of doing this and we need to know both of them. The first involves future values. So if we look at the timeline below, where X Rand is being paid at the end of each time period, we see here at time period T1 there is an X, T2 there is an X, T3 an X, all the way up to TK there is an X. Now all these Xs are payments that have already been made. Note the Xs that follow are grayed out. This is because for now we're only focusing on the Xs up until TK. So let's consider if the loan that was taken out at T0 had not been removed from the bank, how much it would be worth at time TK if it instead had stayed in the bank and earned interest over this period. And now let's see this value in comparison to the future value at TK of all the payments made. The difference between these two values leads to this formula. This is one of the methods used to calculate the outstanding balance on a loan. So using an interest rate of i, if we take the loan amount and compound it forward k times, this first part here is the amount the loan would have grown to, and the second part is the annuity which gives us how much the payments of x rand for k time periods would have accumulated to. The difference between the two will be what is still outstanding on the loan. It hopefully makes sense then that the earlier in the agreed time period you calculate this difference, the larger the balance outstanding. And if you were to do this calculation over the full time period, the difference between these amounts will be zero because at this point there will no longer be anything owing on the loan. Let's have a look here at worked example one to illustrate how we would use this formula. Sandile took a loan of 48,000 Rand generating interest at 12% per annum compounded monthly, he is repaying 1,500 Rand at the end of each month. Calculate the outstanding balance on Sandile's loan at the end of three years. You're welcome to pause the video here if you want to give this a try first before moving on to see the solution. So, first step is to place the interest rate of 12% per month in the memory of the calculator. Then, to calculate the outstanding balance, we find the difference of the value of the loan that was compounded forward monthly for three years, in other words, for 36 time periods, and the annuity formula calculating the accumulation of the 36 monthly payments of 1,500 Rand already made. The answer here is 4,061 Rand and 58 cents. Now if we look at the other method, the focus in this case is on what still needs to be paid. In other words, if we look at the timeline, we are no longer interested in the payments that have already been made, but in the payments that are still owing. And so what we are going to do is say, if we are focusing on time TK, we want to scale all these payments that are still owing back to time TK. The number of payments remaining is the difference between n and k, and so we simply use the present value annuity formula where the present is at tk. In other words, the amount still owing on the loan at time period tk is the present value of the number of payments still owing. So here is our present value annuity formula. This is the second way we use to calculate the outstanding balance where here we put in the number of payments still to be made. Let's have a look now at worked example 2 to illustrate how to use this method. Sophie has been paying off a loan with 750 Rand at the end of each month. The lender charges interest at 9,5% per annum compounded monthly. Calculate the outstanding balance on Sophie's loan one year before the end of the contract agreement. So where does our focus need to be? We have to focus on the payments that still have to be made. We see here 
It is asking us to calculate the outstanding balance one year before the end of the contract agreement. In other words, 12 payments still have to be made. Why don't you pause and give this example a go first before we move on to work through the solution together. Hopefully you're getting into a good rhythm of putting the interest rate in the memory. Here it is in this case, 9,5% per annum compounded monthly. Now, because 12 payments are remaining, we have the power of negative 12, and we use this present value annuity formula method to calculate the amount owing on the loan one year before the completion of the contract agreement. In this example, the amount owing is 8,553 rand and 49 cents. So just to recap on these first two worked examples, in worked example one, we knew what the loan was, and so we used method 1 to calculate the outstanding balance. In worked example 2, we didn't know what the loan was, but we knew how much time was left on the loan, and so in this case, we used method 2 to calculate the outstanding balance. Let's have a look now at worked example 3, which says, Jake took out a loan of 360,000 Rand and was required to make repayments at the end of each month for five years. Interest was charged at 9,8% per annum compounded monthly. Calculate in A the value of the equal monthly repayments and in B the outstanding balance at the end of three years. Now that we have read the whole question, let's focus on part A. Calculating the equal monthly repayments means calculating x in our annuity formula. Note that because we are given the value of the loan, we are in fact given the present value. Pause here and give part A a try. So here to solve for x in our present value annuity formula, having first put the monthly interest rate in the calculator memory, 360,000 Rand is the present value, and monthly payments for five years is 60 payments. So we see here the equal monthly repayments will be 7,613 Rand and 56 cents. Remember to tick a question to indicate that you've done it. It is important to keep in mind that we are going to need this answer when we move to part B. Also, because X is a payment value, we need to use its rounded off form as mentioned in a previous video. Be sure to give B a try first before moving on to see its solution. So looking now at part B's solution, in this example we can in fact choose which method to use for finding the outstanding balance because we have been given all the necessary information. If we look here at method 1, because we were given the value of the loan and the time period of 3 years, this is enough information to use the future value method. But we were also given that the original agreement was over five years, so we know we are two years short. In other words, with this information, we can use the present value method. You may note that there is a 17 cents difference in the answers. This occurs because of that rounding off of the value of x, the repayments. You're welcome to pause the video at this point to have a good look at both of these methods. A reminder as we come to the end of this video of our Grade 12 Maths 2-in-1 Study Guide to reference for further practice. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you are starting to feel more comfortable and confident with the concept and application of Balance Outstanding. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.